I appreciate you joining me once again. We are going to be thinking about the building of the temple today. Our hymn, today the hymn is A Mighty Fortress. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper he amid the flood of mortal hills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hay. On earth is not his equal. A Mighty Fortress Our passage, we're actually going to begin in Ezra chapter 4 where we left off yesterday and where we closed out with as adversaries were opposing the building and spoke about that yesterday as they're going to end up lying about what the Jews were doing to the king and the king orders the work to cease and the work does cease and then we noticed yesterday in chapter 5 of Ezra at verse 1 then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah son of Iddo prophets prophesied to the Jews who are in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel who is over them. A good amount of time has gone by. So now let's come up to Haggai and read what is said to Zerubbabel. In Haggai chapter 1, at verse 1, in the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses, and this temple to lie in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. And so as we think about the temple being built. And Haggai, after all this time, now says, it's time, it's not time for you to live in your paneled houses. Right? What had they been doing when the king gave the order for the work to stop? They stopped. They had been afraid, the adversaries had been lying about them, the order was given to stop. They stopped, and they got busy with other things, didn't they? And that's the thing. They got, they got busy doing other stuff. They got busy living their own lives. They got busy building their paneled houses. And they stopped thinking about the house of God. We need to be very careful to make sure that we are putting the Lord first. So Haggai, that is what he is reminding them of. We need to be building. It is time once again to build been busy with other things, they need to get busy with the right sort of things. Now, to read on in the account, a little bit later, as the people obey the Lord, chapter 2 at verse 1, In the seventh month, on the twenty-first of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, and to those other individuals and the remnant of the people, saying, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory, and how do you see it now? In comparison with it, is this not in your eyes as nothing? They laid the foundation, and I believe it's in Ezra where it speaks about those who had seen it, right? because they're, they're in captivity for 70 years. So if you happen to have someone who's, who, who is of some age, they would have seen the old temple. And in comparison, it is exactly like this passage says. Is this not in your eyes as nothing? It is much smaller. It is, you, can you can just tell by the footprint of it. So in Ezra, it talks about that those who were younger rejoiced, and those who were older, they wept. And so you could not discern between the, between the two people overjoyed and people oversorrowed. 
And so the new is going to be smaller. It is not going to be Solomon's temple. It's just not. It's not able to be, frankly. And so that's as they build. As they build, build, this is what the Lord says through Haggai. How do you see it now? It, it would have been very easy for them to have been discouraged about that. To say, we don't have the materials. We don't have the we don't have the lumber, we don't have enough lumber, we don't have enough gold, we don't have enough silver, we don't have enough supplies. They've given us they've given us so much and it's just just nothing in comparison. It would have been very easy to be discouraged. When we do our work, and maybe we are not as able to do as much as we used to. Or maybe we're in a small congregation. Maybe there's not many kids. Maybe there's not many men. Maybe there's not many women. Maybe there's not much whatever. It's very easy to get discouraged. What we have to do is get busy with what we have. That's what we have to do. The third point I would like to make Verse 6, For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more it is a little while, and I will shake heaven and earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations. They shall come to the desire of all nations, and I will fill this temple with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. The latter will be greater. Greater, greater in size, what we have to realize is what this is speaking about. What were the people doing? What were the people supposed to do? How is the latter going to be greater than the former? How is that possible? It's because of who is coming, the Messiah. That's how it is possible. That is why the people came back. That is who the people are supposed to be preparing for. That is one reason the temple is being built, so that people can be preparing for the Messiah's return. That is the only way that the glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former. We're, we're starting to look beyond physical structures and we're thinking about what is going to be built, the kingdom. That's what we're starting to look at. I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations. This isn't, this isn't the Jewish temple. This isn't the Jewish kingdom. What is the church? As Jew and Gentile come in, we think about the glory of the latter will exceed the glory of the former. And so they needed to get busy. They are preparing for the one who is going to come. And that's Jesus. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.